Uh, good morning to all the viewers of uh, Tax Sutra. Uh, the lo long awaited historic budget is out. Uh, no doubt the finance minister was under severe constraints because of the enormous impact of the pandemic. And it is quite heartening that there have been major uh, announcements on a macro level. For example, the insurance sector has opened up, the FDI has gone up to 74%. There are a lot of other in, in, uh, infrastructure projects, health, education, the expenditure has gone up. So I think that uh, thrust of the finance minister may be to uh, stimulate growth through expenses. So that is on the, uh, on the macroeconomic front. There is also a uh, proposal to have a huge amount of road construction through highways. There is also a proposal to have some hundred new, uh, uh, what you call, uh, electric uh, parks or something. And sorry, the mega industrial uh, textile parks are sort to be sort to boost textile exports. So all these are good proposals and uh, I hope that they pan out into reality. We had a wonderful time when Mr. Atul Bihari Vajpayee had this golden quadrilateral that made a huge difference to India. I hope the new highway project and the other infrastructure projects give a big boost. The insurance sector also will get a lot of money from overseas, and this is also good. Now, this is on the economic front. I'll just focus mainly on the uh, tax proposals in the finance bill because, as a lawyer, my focus is more on the legal aspects of the bill. Uh, I, I find that, as far as the bill is concerned, there are 160 clauses in the finance bill, so there are large number of amendments. I think the old trend of uh, amending, uh, making multiple amendments, wherever there is some amount of revenue involved, you amend it and plug it. That is the uh, main philosophy, and uh, which I don't think is a good thing. Uh, if we are to aim at high economic growth, then we will have to necessarily have a much, much broader view of the uh, of economics and of tax policy. I think the main, the most fundamental change should be the shift from the complete focus on tax collection and revenue maximization at any cost. A unidimensional, singular focus thing on just collecting more tax and plugging every possible leakage is counterproductive. I think we'll have to take a holistic view. Uh, to give you an example, what I'm saying, for example, real estate. Now, there have been a crying need for boosting the real estate sector. It's a large generator of employment. There is a huge housing shortage, and uh, I had, we had proposed that 43 CA should be abolished. But what has happened is they've increased the safe harbor to 120 percent. I don't know why. Why can't we just cancel it? Then interest has been just uh, in increased by a certain amount. If you give full allowances and boost the real estate sector, you may lose some amount of income tax, but the gain you'll get through GST on cement and other things by boosting the real estate sector. The amount of employment you'll generate will be far, far more than what you lose. Uh, similarly, the uh, minor proposal, like for example, you denied carry forward loss to a charitable trust. You have taken away goodwill in mergers and acquisitions. These are all minor things which could have allowed to continue in the larger scheme of things. And the focus could have been more on how to make Indian tax system attractive to the foreigners. And I've been saying that we should have a an overall perspective of all the taxes put together and see how India can be a tax-friendly destination as compared to Vietnam and so on and so forth. That is most important than this particular proposal. Then there are uh, some proposals, particularly on reopening of assessment where the whole thing has changed. Then uh, they abolished the authority for advanced ruling and made it into a board for advanced ruling. Now this board consists of two commissioners. So I think it's a retrograde step. They could have abolished the authority for advanced ruling and given it to the income tax tribunal because tribunal is, has got the expertise to deal with tax questions. Against the tribunal's order, there is a reference to the high court. So instead of having two commissioners deciding advanced rulings, I don't think it's going to serve any purpose. We have got DRP with three commissioners. We know that it's very, very difficult for them to take an independent view. And what will happen is if two commissioners take a particular view in an advanced ruling case, then it is going to affect hundreds of other SSCs, though it's not a binding precedent, but that's the view going to be taken. And we see in GST also, a advanced ruling headed by commissioners, 80-90% of the cases are against the SEC itself. So the only reason to go to advanced ruling is to reach the high court faster because you know you're going to get an adverse ruling and you go to the high court. 
I am also afraid that if we got a board for advance ruling manned by commissioners, then no foreign investor is going to even attempt to apply to this board for advance ruling because he knows the decision is going to be against him from the beginning. That's the historical uh, perspective, historical fact. So I think there's a ret retrograde step. Even in equalization levy, the changes that have been made could lead to more and more litigation. And I think there is a serious concern on this overlap between uh, TCS and TDS. You have unnecessarily making people deduct 0.1 percent here, 0.2 percent there. It, and it increases the huge cost of complying with the law. And I don't know what is the overall tax benefit that they are going to get on this. So I think the amendments could have been uh, avoided. Many, many amendments were wholly unnecessary. Uh, there is also a danger of uh, the GST and other clause being retrospective. There are quite a few retrospective amendments now. For example, the Supreme Court held that for clubs there is no GST because it's a mutual association. Now that has been amended retrospectively from 1-7-2017. What for? What is the total amount of revenue from all the clubs in India? How many are they making profits? What will be the tax? Why do you do such a retrospective taxation? I don't see. And again, uh, the uh, obsession with fake invoices and various changes made also is going to prove to be counterproductive. Overall, I thought that many of the amendments could have been avoided. We could have focused more on a budget stimulating growth rather than focusing on collection of taxes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I can't uh, let you go without uh, asking you a question on faceless tribunal. It's been it's already creating quite a bit of controversy uh, and the first reactions have not been so positive uh, to it. Uh, there is a feeling that we are moving too so, uh, too fast. We are rushing it. Faceless assessment appeals have not even started uh, in earnest. And you now are talking about a faceless uh, tribunal. It's giving a lot of people the jitters. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what you mean by a faceless tribunal. If you mean that uh, tribunal hearings are going to be through video conferencing, then I have no objection to that because we are even now appearing through video conferencing. So, if I'm going to see Mr. Uh, Arun Giri as a member of the tribunal, instead of appearing before you in person in a court hall, I appear before you on the video conference as I appear before judges and things, then there is no problem. But if you're saying that faceless, I don't even know who are the members in front of me, then I think it's a matter for serious concern. I don't, I don't know if that is the, what is contemplated by a personal hearing, at least at the tribunal level. And I also don't know why they are going to this faceless assessment. I thought that you're right. Instead of rushing through, they could have tried this faceless assessment for two years, seen the feedback, seen faceless CIT appeals for two years, and then go to faceless assessment. If faceless tribunal means that you don't even see the members, then it's going to be a very, very difficult thing. Because a lot of things depends on the approach, the questions put by the bench, the body language of the judges, the uh, arguments which you make. I mean, how can you have a faceless judge? You're just arguing into a You don't even see who the person is, what is his doubt. You don't understand anything at all. You uh, could violate sir, the basic structure, no, the I, doctrine, I, I or the independence, no. the independence of the tribunal. You you argued Metras Bar Association uh, case. Sir, I, so, I, you, no, I don't know what you mean by faceless assessment. Do you mean that you can't even see the no, faceless numbers? tribunal? Yeah, I think what what the finance minister, if I recollect correctly, in the speech said is that uh, anyone who wants anyone who wants a personal hearing uh, can 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 ask for it through a virtual uh, hearing or video conferencing. But the scheme itself, they are going to set up some faceless center, some national center. Uh, of the of the tribunal and possibly uh, it could be a replica of the faceless assessment of faceless appeal uh, for a moment let's presume that sir. actually i don't even know what it means by what how a faceless assessment is done i only know that you get some response from some assist officer you don't know who he is and then you respond to him and so on and so forth so they should really spell out what they mean by a faceless uh, tribunal because i don't think anywhere in the world you've got a a high tribunal at a high level of income tax which is a final fact finding authority dealing with yeah. crores of matter than that's actually that's the only main place where you get a real decision, general, general justice. Sure. Right? Whether you like it or not, the EO invariably confirms the uh, order. CITF may get some relief, but historically, all of us have placed faith in the income tax tribunal. Now, I think it should be better not to tamper with it. You can perhaps say that virtual hearings will be there unless it's a batch case or unless it's a special bench case where you want a physical hearing. Otherwise, it should be, you can say, hearing will be virtual. That's perfectly fine. But if it faceless means I don't even see the members, then I have got a serious issue. But let's see how it actually uh, pans out. Yeah, oh, just one more question, sir, on reopening. Uh, the timeline has been reduced to, to three years. We've seen so much litigation, sir, re reopening. You argued so many cases. 
you argued one uh, on in, in supreme court on ndtv successfully you know writs after writs after writs you, you remember that famous dialogue of 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 you know damini tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh so many reopening cases sir. you think that 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 uh, somewhere the courts will get declogged due to this reopening uh, see what they have done is as i see the amendment they made it 3 years and i think for some ex- exceptional cases they made it 10 years and i think they have added some kind of uh, restrictions on when you can reopen so we but you see the point is where there's a where the board talks of some risk assessment strategy we don't know what that means uh, actually i was right long i've been in various seminars or four i've been saying that why don't you follow the central excise model for reopening today you issue a reopening notice i don't even know on what ground you are reopening suppose i'm a let's say a large company a listed company with a turnover of 1000 crores now if you're going to reopen my asset assessment you must at least issue me a notice saying that look mr giri as uh, as the tax officer sir or the md in your assessment i find that on depreciation this is wrong and here income has escaped assessment so you laser focus on that point issue me a notice with bang on at the time of issuing notice under 148 they could have given a show cause notice that we are reopening the assessment for a b c d reasons right today you simply say i'm reopening whether it's under capital gains or it's under business income or it is under mat nobody knows so i thought that plus the reason for the department can be annexed that would have been better i i i don't know by uh, so and i think what happens to the old case laws you can't have a mere change of opinion yeah. all those judgments are how how they are going to be packed let us see the fine print right up to kelvinator <laughs> yes 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 from absolutely. time immemorial to kelvinator <laughs> yes yes absolutely sir uh, sir but uh, last question you can have you can mm-hmm. sir, i know you are running short of time uh, sir but in terms no, no, no. directionally sir directionally on the tax policy side every year you see uh, plethora of amendments this year is no exception you have uh, almost 100 amendments sir uh, where exactly do you think Uh, you know we are heading uh, in terms of uh, direct tax policy so you you uh, revise the iconic commentary kanga and and and, and palki wala uh, see the point is uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, budget which has made no difference from the earlier thing of making multiple amendments you know like for example you take 1023 c now we got the 20th proviso and then the next nation file added to the corporate donation is made you can use the mega textile park scheme all right so you, you want to boost textile exports as it is most of them are shifted to vietnam and philippines and cambodia and wherever Uh, if you want a mega textile park for the purpose of encouraging export then your gst should be amended to encourage export you can't have a gst system where there is very difficult to get credit difficult to get refund everything is clogged come to your park so if you got these major proposals then everything must be geared to encourage that i ask myself a simple question if a person has a choice of investing in vietnam india or thailand what is it in the budget which will make him run to india and make it as a preferred destination you see that what that's what we are think and answer that what are the options open it's like buying you see today if i have got a choice of three products a b c then i will choose which is most suitable so government must say that india should become so attractive that there is no incentive to go anywhere we got a ready made market of 130 crore people right so all these electronic goods which are made in smaller countries can be shifted to india if you just give them the incentives Whether you got the PLI scheme or this scheme and that scheme, you see we have got all we have done all this software park and hardware parks. They won't click SEZs. What has happened to SEZs? They're not really clicked at all because you have SEZs, then you impose MAT on them. So we should have a very very clear vision of where we want to go. And I think if you want to have a fight driven economy, if you want to go to a fight driven economy, then you have to have a far far broader vision and don't think of tax in a unidimensional way. Think of it as an overall. growth uh, catalyst, catalyst rather than a uh, tax collecting mechanism do not think uh, of growth in a unidimensional manner no, says no, no, senior no, no, no. 
No, do not think. I mean, let's not focus on just lugging tax loss here and tax loss Got there. Got it. Yeah, if you're going to save in, in, in income tax, but it is going to hamper the growth of that sector, you're losing yep. out on indirect taxes, losing out on employment. That's what my point is. If sir is saying, do not miss the woods for the trees. That's what sir yes, is that's saying. That's a better way of putting it. I think you have put it better than me. Yeah, so, uh, you know, what a pleasure always hearing from senior advocate, legal luminary, constitutional scholar, uh, and one of the foremost thinkers we have in this country, Mr. Arvind Data. Thank you so much, sir. Thank for you. Talking thank you. Wish you, all thank you. Wish all your uh, viewers all the very best. Thanks, Thanks so much, sir. Thanks always so much. a pleasure talking to you.